In today's video, we are gonna take a look at all the different raw video modes, all the different options that we have to shoot some raw video with Magic Lantern and the Canon EOS M. This is the original one from 2012, and we're gonna go through each and every different mode, and I'm gonna talk about you know, how I would use it, what I would recommend, and just overall how it works, including the crop factors. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now before we get into that, I just want to clarify a few questions that a lot of people have been asking on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. So first things first, with Magic Lantern RAW and the Canon EOS M, can you shoot continuous RAW? And the answer is yes, yes you can, uh, depending on what mode you use, and we'll go through that later on in this video. The other question is, can you record out clean HDMI? And yes you can. There is an option in the Magic Lantern menu where you can actually select clear overlays and that will pretty much remove every information on your screen and keep it nice and clean for video out. Now I wouldn't use this camera for streaming purposes and the reason because it's less than 1080 resolution so you might as well just go for a cheap alternative, maybe the M100 or the M5 or something like that. But with the Canon EOS M, I wouldn't recommend streaming. Now another thing you want to make sure with when recording Magic Lantern RAW on the Canon EOS M is that it requires a specific card in order to function at its best. You want about 95 megabytes a second or 170 megabyte cards. This is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. It's a 64 gig one. I also have a 512 gig SD card. The only difference is not in the write speed. It's mainly in the read speed. So if you're transferring files from your laptop, um, from your card, then it's gonna be quicker than you would get with 95 megabytes a second. So the difference in speed with these cards mainly lies on the read rather than the write speed. Now recently I've been taking the EOS M to a lot of different places and I've been recording with the Lexa, I think it's a Lexa Pro. Yeah, Lexa Professional 1667. This is 250 megabytes a second and you know, I don't experience any difference with the slower read speed cards. Now the very last question, and I promise we'll get into the video, is, is the EOS M good at low light? You know, is it a capable camera? It is an APS-C camera, and with that smaller sensor, you're not gonna get really fantastic results in low light situations. Now the Canon EOS M can be amazing in low light if you use some post noise reduction. Now what I use is the DaVinci Resolve noise reduction feature, and when I boost the noise reduction to about one quarter of the way, then you can see for yourself how clean the footage can look in pitch darkness. Now there are a few lights out there, you know, from the football field or the cricket ground, but all these shots were with the EOS M at around 800 ISO to 1600 ISO. And with the built-in noise reduction from DaVinci Resolve 17, you can see that the EOS M is definitely nice and clean with this awesome feature in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so now it's time for the different raw video modes with the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW. So I'm just switching on the Canon EOS M now. And here we go. So when you first install Magic Lantern, you know, you're in the 1080 mode. That's the first mode that you start off with. And this is the mode that I recommend for people who are starting out with this camera, who have picked this up for the first time and are starting to get themselves into Magic Lantern. Now the reason for this is because it has a 1.6x crop factor. So pretty much what you get with APS-C Canon bodies, it's gonna have the exact same crop factor, no additional crops um, executed. Now with this mode, you don't record a 1920 by 1080 resolution. It's a bit less, it's around 1736 by 976, 16 by nine aspect ratio. Also with this mode, it is line skipping. And so you're not using every single pixel. And what that results in is aliasing and moire. So you get these colored lines in different areas of clothes or patterns or sharp objects. And this can be quite of an issue if you're recording, you know, landscapes or people's clothing and stuff like that. Now the way to avoid this is by shooting wide open or using a fast vintage lens and trying to get that softness, that soft looking footage out. That's one way to reduce it. Otherwise using the Magic Lantern RAW processing software called MLV app, you can use CA Desatcher. Increase that and it will reduce sharpness, but it will also remove some of the aliasing that you might get in your footage. Now the 1080 mode is the mode that I recommend for shooting documentaries, music videos, uh, B-rolls, stuff like that. 
but I'll do a few tests and see how comfortable you feel shooting with this mode and just see how the aliasing and moire play out. Like with all modes, you get the option of changing 10-bit to 12-bit to 14-bit color. And in terms of the difference between those, there's not much of a difference. So if you want to play it safe, then I recommend with all modes, just sticking with the 10-bit depth. Now with the next preset down, you're still in the 1080 mode, but you get high frame rates, 30, 46, and 38 frames per second. You do get aliasing in this mode quite a lot, so you need to be a bit conscientious about how you're going to go about shooting with this mode. So lots of aliasing. Um, you do get a stretched live view. It's a bit anamorphic-like, uh, but it's definitely manageable. But if you're looking to do some high frame rates, then that's definitely an option. Uh, but I personally wouldn't use this mode. Now the next mode is called 2.5K 1 to 1 centered and the reason why it's called centered is because when you're using zoom lenses with the 2.5K or any other high resolution mode, when you zoom out, it sort of doesn't follow a straight image circle, it goes sort of off to the side and looks a bit weird on your live view, um, even though it's capturing the exact zooming of your lens. So 2.5K 1 to 1 centered fixes that. When you zoom out on your live view, it actually shows you zooming out straight with your uh, image circle and it doesn't go off to the side on your live view. It looks a bit weird. Trust me if you've had experience with this It's just it's weird. So 2.5k is the next mode. It shoots 2520 by 1418 resolution with this mode. It's not continuous at 16 by 9 But if you enable 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio and shoot 2.4k resolution and under then you can get about continuous recording if you want to shoot 16 by 9 then you would have to reduce the resolution from 2.5K to about 2.3K and under. Now the reason why you want to shoot this mode is because there is a great reduction of aliasing. It's barely noticeable and you know obviously you get the high resolution. You can crop in, reframe and the footage just looks gorgeous. You'd probably want to use wide angle lenses like I've got here, the 11 to 22 or the kit lens 15 to 45, Sigma Art 18 to 35, 1.8. All these wide angle lenses are going to work well with this mode because when you're shooting high resolution modes with the Canus M and Magic Lantern Raw, they do have a high crop factor around 2.96 times to anywhere up to four times or 3.5 times crop. So wide angle lenses are going to be your friends with these high resolution modes. Now another thing with these high resolution modes is that the live view is cropped so it's not what you see is what you get, it's going to be cropped into the live view so it does help you nail your focus but if you press the info button over here it should give you the correct framing of what you're actually recording. So on the live view it's a bit of a cropped live view and it's not accurate of what you're recording. So that's something to be aware about but overall I've had absolutely no issues with this, you know just quiet focus there, press the info button and then I can see exactly what I'm recording. Now the next mode down is the 3K resolution mode. I don't recommend this unless you're an expert and you've been using the Canon EOS and Magic Lantern for a long time. With this mode you can achieve a 3K resolution for sure, uh, but you know you have to play with the FPS override and a few other things in order to get this at at least 24 frames per second. And not only that, you can only record for about two to four seconds. So that's one thing to keep in mind and why if you're starting out, I pretty much stay away from this mode. Okay, the next one is the 4K resolution mode. I absolutely love this guy if I'm shooting time-lapse. It's not called the time-lapse mode, but it's called 4K. And this goes down to really low frames per second, at least, you know, one FPS, two FPS. 4, 8 FPS. Now if you don't know how to shoot time lapse and you want to know how to use time lapse mode with the Canon EOS M, then I'll put a link in the description below or I'll just put it up here somewhere in the top corner with a card. Okay, next part is the 5K anamorphic and then the 5K anamorphic FLV. Don't use these modes, they have a stretched live view that looks really weird and anamorphic like, hence the name 5K anamorphic. Skip those two and then go all the way down to where it says 5K anamorphic FRTP. FRTP stands for for real-time preview and what that means is you know when you're recording somebody what you see is what you get it's an accurate live view and it's not cropped in and it's something that I would use um, instead of the 1080 mode if you're a bit frustrated with the aliasing going on then the 5k FRTP mode would be the next mode that I would use because the live view is accurate and you do get around a two times crop so it's not 1.6 times like the 1080 mode it's a two times crop around micro four thirds and there is a reduction in aliasing. Now you might say, why is it called 5K FRTP if it doesn't shoot 5K? 
and that's because it performs an upscaling. So it records at a low, lower resolution at about 1280 by 2160. And then in post, it'll upscale to 4K or 5K, depending on what aspect ratio you've chosen. All right, we've been having mixed weather patterns. The sun comes in and out. And this is a nice, beautiful scene here. I've switched to 5K FRTP. I've been shooting 2.2K raw uh, with 30 frames per second. It's been my favorite mode to use, but I think for this one, I'm gonna test some 5K FRTP, which stands for, for real-time preview. So you get the full display. You know, it's not cropped in, in the live view. You, what you see is what you get. So let's get some cinematic shots here. Now it's not the sharpest mode out there. It's about HD-ish quality, uh, but I'll still use it for music videos, for documentaries, short films, B-roll, um, stuff like that, because the aliasing is reduced, Mira is minimal, and overall it is a reliable mode to shoot with. Can you shoot continuous raw with it? Yes, you can. Uh, just enable 10-bit or 12-bit. All right, so my battery just died. Now I'm gonna plug it into a power bank. And yes, you can power up the Canon USM with a power bank using the DRE12 dummy adapter to USB-C out and then to your power bank that supports USB-C. Now I've been shooting a lot with the 5K FRTP mode and you know I've been testing out with different lenses like this one right here by Tamron. It's the SP2470 f2.8. I've popped it onto a speed booster and you know you got vibration control so it's nice and stabilized and with the two times crop you know it's still fine because it's wide enough especially with the speed booster on and I was able to get some great footage using this mode without any post sharpening whatsoever. So if you are starting out with Magic Lantern Raw on the Canius M then stick with the 1080 mode, stick with the 5k FRTP those two will work fine for you until you get the experience and then I'll look at the higher resolution modes. Now the next mode is 2.8K raw video. It's amazing, I've been using it for a long time now. I've made a few short films with it too and travel videos. It's a great mode, really. I mean, you get fantastic resolution. Um, it is limited to about 2.35 to one aspect ratio. So if you're doing indie filmmaking short films, then this will work absolutely fine. You can only record to about 15 seconds in bright situations or bright sunlight. Uh, but if you're indoors and in, your footage is a bit underexposed, then I've been able to get eight minutes of 2.8K raw footage with this mode and it's been absolutely fantastic. It's cinematic, the colors are great. And when you're editing in DaVinci Resolve, I mean, the colors are just phenomenal. So if you wanna really get that high resolution going, some cinematic aspect ratio, short films, indie filmmaking, then 2.8K raw is a great way to go. Now, because you're in a 2.8K mode, it doesn't mean that you only shoot 2.8K. You can change the aspect ratio and then reduce the resolution to achieve another aspect ratio. For example, two to one aspect ratio or 16 by nine or two to one, 1 1.85 to one. So you're not just limited to the 2.8K resolution. All right, next one is 2.5K one-to-one -one centered FRTP. Now, remember we said the FRTP mode stands for for real-time preview. So with the other 2.5K mode, it's cropped live view, but with this one, it has sort of a small box to the top right or the top left, um, depending on which side you're looking at. Um, and then you get the exact same live view. So what you see is what you get, but you just get a smaller box to look at rather than the whole screen of the Canonius M. For me personally, I think that this mode is probably my favorite high resolution mode um, because you know, what you see is what you get and that's what I need when I'm using gimbals or recording people who are moving quickly or, or subjects, animals, and I wanna be able to make sure that I'm getting them in focus properly without having to press info and get that you know choppy playback. So 2.5K FRTP is my favorite high resolution mode. Now in the ratio tab, if you enable 16 by nine, then you get 1920 by 1080. If you disable it and select off, then you can get a high resolution to about 2.5K, 2.35 to one aspect ratio, or 2.2K, two to one. So just change the resolution and see what aspect ratio draws your attention. Now the next mode is a 2.5K one to one centered HDMI. So if you're using monitors and you wish to shoot with high resolution modes, then the HDMI 2.5K is the mode to use because with the other ones, you know, there's lots of drop frames, there's lots of issues because you're using lots of power on the Canonius M. This 2.5K HDMI mode has been configured to work perfectly with monitors. So, you know, if you want to shoot high resolution using monitors, then this would be the one that I would go with. All right, so the last mode is the 2K one-to-one -one FRTP. 
and again FRTP stands for for real-time preview and it's 2k resolution it does have a crop factor of about I think 3.2 3.5 times so wide angle lenses are gonna be your best bet uh, especially stabilized ones like the 15 to 45 the 18 to 55 kit lens that you get with the Kenius M I've got the 7 artisans 12 mm f 2.8 that's still fine uh, but you are gonna get some jitter um, nest going on or some shake because you know, the high crop factor 12 times 3 12 36 48 and you know if you can be hand holding like this then expect some of that badness in your footage now that's pretty much it these are all the presets that you get with Kenius M and Magic Lantern Raw and you know hopefully this video has helped you out in some way now you're probably staring at this grip and thinking come on Zeke talk about the grip in your hand well this is actually by Shapeways it's a company that makes grips and you know cages for the Kenius M the M50 and likewise so this thing costs around 35 to 50 bucks you can get cheaper ones off eBay that sell for around 6 to 15 bucks but this one has like a concave grip and it just feels comfortable when I want to keep this camera nice and minimal in my hands. So that's pretty much it. These are all the different raw modes with the Kenius M and Magic Lantern Raw. If you guys got something out of it, then give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.